go back to some other names, because this is mm. it's fun for me. Mm. Mr. Sinatra? Well, Frank is wonderful. He really is. In fact, uh, I was over his house the other day, and he did a wonderful thing. I, I said something that wasn't funny, and he slapped my wife. <laughs> but it, it, it relaxed us all. But you know, he's, he's a great, I always give him the gangster image. You know, right. He always says, stop already with the gang, which is not so. But I go back with him so many years. It started in Florida. And it's the old story with Frank Sinatra. He came into a place called Murray Franklin's at that time, which was a little tiny nightclub. And he came in. And he brought a lot of people in those days, Peggy Lee and what have you, and then he saw me out here in California. But the idea was when Sinatra left, if he went, ha, 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 all the people went with him. It's funny. <laughs> so whenever Frank left, they left. Right. But he was very influential in uh, bringing people to see me. Right. And he's been a great friend, he and his wife, Barbara, to my wife and I. He right. really is. And whenever I'm, you know, whenever he's over my house, we play Sinatra records and you know, it starts to get on my nerves, but I keep playing it, you know, because... You know, <laughs> otherwise I don't stop my car. <laughs> and Bob... <laughs> <laughs> Bob Newhart? Yeah. Anyway, uh... Bob Newhart. The white lady wrote it. I didn't know. I don't know you from... Bob, the... Bob Newhart. Now, he's a fun guy. He's the type of guy that when we go on trips, I watch flies die on his face. Uh, he... Uh, he doesn't like that. He always says, why do you always put me down? And I don't. I love the guy dearly. Yeah. And it's interesting because with two guys that came from two different societies, he's from Chicago, very educated guy. I came from the street. You know, I had trouble with, the, you know, listening to the bell when it came to go to a different class. Right. But he is a very bright man. And uh, we became friends. And I always say, and I say it on the stage, the wives, you know, wives get along. And his wife, Jen, and my wife, Barbara, are very close. And that made Bob and I become great friends. Yeah. But we both have the same values, you know. And he's very successful, as you know. Now he has a third television show, which does bother me. I'm not jealous, you know, but I, I do drive by his house and throw a rock once in a while, you know. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it just, cause his career is going great, and we do travel together and get along great. Yeah. Now, do you ever think about the influence that you've had on the younger folks? Were you, are you surprised when you come to something like Comic Relief and everyone is just like... <gasps> well, I, I really, speaking of that, would be, I was delighted that I was there with you and Billy and Robin. I really was. Uh, and I noticed everybody called me sir, you know, so I, I started to sit down in the chair and spit up so they'd come and bring <laughs> medication for me or something. But everybody looked at me and said, hey, my father's uncle's cousin, who is now 89, saw you. <laughs> thinks you're a riot. And I look over and there's a guy in a chair in a green room going, hey, hey, hey. And he's one of my best fans. Hey, hey. I do great old men. Hey, hey. Anyway, so uh, I have all these people that, these youngsters that were, were like talking to me, as you said, a little bit in awe. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I find that very flattering because I, I do believe in my heart that I'm one of a kind. I mean, uh, I, I don't know of anybody in this industry that lasted or has gone as far as I have doing what I do. Yeah. And I think that's the secret for all of us. Did you ever get those days out? Oh, Sid Caesar wrote this great book. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that stuck in my head, because mm -hmm. it hadn't been something I thought about really, but did it ever not you that one day you'd wake up and maybe you somehow wouldn't be able to do what you do? Did that ever float around in your head? Not that. I've woken up many a day and said, I don't have a job. <laughs> I've thought a lot of times, gee, I'll wake up and tomorrow there'll be no job there. Yeah. And especially as, you know, as you get, uh, get up there in a few years, you say, oh, gee, will they still want me? Will they still like me? Yeah. I never feel that I'll lose it on the stage. I always feel when I get out there, it's so funny. So how many times have you sat in the dressing room and I felt like, oh, the worst. And I said, I'm going to do the worst show in the world. And it's, uh, I come out and I, I think I'm a riot. Yeah. And it turns out the audience responds great. And there are nights that I'm way up, you know, I'm really feeling just, and I go out there and it's a little bit tougher. But I find that uh, I, I never feel that I'm losing it. I always am concerned about will it go on forever or will it go on when I can walk away. Mm. Right now, you know, we have a big home. In fact, one of our servants died walking to the main gate. Uh, and so we have a, have a tremendous home. <laughs> <laughs> I just take your time. This will run into Tuesday. Yeah. I have, to, I have to segue. This is called the segue. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Um, when you talk about different ethnic groups, mm -hmm. I'm, I want to throw this, and again, sure. this comes from the... If I say to you, there's a white lady with a 44-inch bust and no butt, mm. what, would, what, what springs to mind? 
She needs an operation. <laughs> There's an Italian black man in the middle of the audience with a huge mustache sitting with a small poodle. I think the mob would kill him. That's pretty good, Don. Now, well, hey, you don't find black guys in the mafia, no. You find them bringing sandwiches to the mafia. Why is that? Well, because a black guy can't handle it. He wants to do the robbery, one, two, three. You know what I mean? Right. Italian guys plan it out. Right. Black guy right in front of the cop goes, watch this, mother. Bang! You right. know, Italian guy goes, Carmine, Tuesday night in back of the house. There's a difference. That's why the blacks don't get a chance. That's why they're all singers. I mean, I get nervous when I get on an airplane and I see a black pilot sitting in the cockpit going, switch on, switch off, switch on, you know. And then you run down the runway and you don't take off. <laughs> You're just running down the runway, you know. So black people do have problems, but we all do. Jewish people don't have problems because <laughs> when we have a problem, we, we have cash. <laughs> so there, there is some some line to being Jewish. You got to believe in what you are and say, hey, God said, I'm, I'm the guy, you're a Jew, and be happy with it. And I'm certainly happy with it, you know. And now after that, I would like a donation. <laughs> in order to get that donation, mm. I've got to talk about this next product coming up. We'll be right back. Do whatever you want. You got it. talk a little bit about Innocent Blood, which is the movie you just yeah. finished. What, yeah. what is that? Well, it, it stars this Anne Pario from La Femme Nikita. She's a beautiful actress, a French actress, a first American film. Robert Lozier, who's just a ah, brilliant best. artist, he really is. Very serious guy. We had a lot of fun. I, I made him laugh, so that was an accomplishment. And Anthony LaPaglia, who I think will be the new Mel Gibson, he's, he's a very talented guy. And yours truly. And I play a sleazy lawyer for the mob in this picture. And uh, Landis made sure that I, uh, I didn't play it for comedy. I played it as, as, as honest as I could right. to make it come out funny. Because, you know, when, when we're, we're comics on the screen, sometimes there's a tendency to go back to your nightclub kind right. of thing. Right. And it's nothing like that. And I'm very happy about it. Yeah. And I haven't done a film in some time. So I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully we'll do more. But I think it's I think it's a fun picture. It's you know it's vampires and all that stuff. You know, right. and some people uh, will find it very entertaining. Other people will find it uh, entertaining but kind of weird. And uh, it's 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 getting away from reality. That's right. pretty much what right. it is. I mean, it's it's not Prince of Tides. <laughs> For whatever that means, you know, because Prince of Dogs is very serious. They're very serious. Yeah. I'm so glad you came. I love the fact that you've been around 30 years. May I, may I say that I hope that in 30 years that uh, we meet in, <laughs> in another space on somebody else's show. Yeah. And, and just to let you know, you know, with all the years I've known you, but not known you really on a one-on-one -on -one level. And uh, I must say, you're a delightful lady and a, and a big, big talent. And I think... Uh, you deserve things because I hear so much good you do for other people. That's delightful. You don't hear about that too often. But, and you don't walk around with a flag telling everybody you do it. But bless your heart and uh, may God be good to you and yours. Thanks. And yours too. Good night.